Tina Cooks is made possible through the generous support of G's Hot Dog Cafe, home of the Chicago Dog, Papa John's Pizza, Lemonster, Fitchburg, Marlboro, Worcester, KC's Body Connection Massage Center, connecting body, mind, and spirit, Boucher Construction, Central Mass Sand and Gravel. Today, I got a request for homemades by Dennis. So Dennis, here it comes. Alright, so now we're going to start by making our doughs. We're going to do our homemade dough. I'm going to do a white dough and I'm going to do a spinach dough. So we're going to start with the white dough. You can do this in a mixing bowl or you can do this on your counter like I'm doing. Okay. Two cups of flour. Spread it out a little bit. I need some salt. About a teaspoon or so of salt, because there's not that much flour here. All right, so we added the salt. All right, I'm gonna add my eggs. I'm gonna add three eggs. Beat them up a little bit, put them in the middle there. Now a little touch of olive oil, maybe a teaspoon or so. Okay. Now when you're making homemade, you gotta make sure you pull it in a little bit at the side on each side because you'll have an earthquake and it'll go everywhere. So if you'd rather use a mixing bowl, you can. Then once you get this pretty wet, then you can work around the edge like this and just kind of like build up your edges until you got it all worked in. Now we're going to just go with it. Okay. Now unlike a ravioli dough, I'm not adding water to this dough. So we're going to knead in what we need for flour. And if we have to add, we'll add. If not, we don't. There we go. This is coming together good. Okay. You can use a food processor, you can use a stand mixer. If you want, you can do it by hand. It's not that difficult. I'm just gonna get a little more flour to clean off my hands because they're all yucky do. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna knead this up. It'll be nice and soft. So when I make ravioli dough, I add water because the water makes the dough nice and soft so that the raviolis are nice and soft. But when I make homemades, I just use the eggs and the oil and some salt. You just knead this together. Now you wanna knead it for a few minutes because you want to get the flour worked in and the seasoning worked in. Like this, where's my bench scraper? I'll scrape this up. Now you can see how nice that dough is. That's a nice dough. We're gonna let it rest. Now when you make any kind of dough with flour, you have to let the dough rest a good 10, 15 minutes so that the flour has time to absorb the moisture. Okay, we're gonna cover this up. We're gonna let it rest a few minutes and we're gonna start our spinach pasta. Now what I did was, is I took spinach and I made it al oil, it was oil and garlic, and I seasoned it with salt and pepper and granulated garlic. Now I'm gonna just put this right in here, okay, like this. Now, the reason why I season 
my spinach is I want my pasta to taste like something. If you buy frozen spinach, that's great, but you gotta add a little seasoning to it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn this on, so it's gonna make a little bit of noise, and I'm gonna puree this first, and then I'm gonna put my eggs in here, and then I'm gonna switch to my, my dough blade, and I'm gonna show you how we can do it in here, okay? Okay, now I'm also gonna use a seasoned oil. This is a tomato basil oil because I want to have a little bit of flavor because I'm going to make this aloya with shrimp. It's going to be delicious. So we're going to put about, let's see about a tablespoon or so of oil in there. That's a seasoned oil. I used this to make my pizza dough last week when we went shopping for my daughter's dresses for her wedding. And I'll tell you, pizza came out great because of this oil. Now I'm going to drop in two eggs which I am gonna do the same thing in the bowl because, like I said, I've been getting some bad eggs. I'm not too happy about that. There's one. There's two. Okay. Not gonna worry about beating them because <laughs> this thing is gonna beat them up. <laughs> All right, let's go. All right, now I'm gonna shut this off. And I'm going to take this out, and I'm going to put in my dough blade, which is to make a dough. I'm going to take my flour, and I'm going to put in, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do it this way, because it's going to be neater. So I'm going to do one. Now, with this dough, I might take it out a little bit early to see if we need more flour, because we have the spinach, we have the eggs, we have the oil. Spinach sometimes will add a little more moisture. So let's go. All right, I'm gonna shut this off now. You can see how nice and green it is. I'm gonna put this out here. I'm gonna put some flour here because I wanna make sure that it's gonna be the right texture for the pasta. You don't want it to fall apart. This might need, like I said, it might need a little more flour. So I'm just gonna put a little in there just to get my hands. There we go. Oh, this is gonna be a good texture. It's a little bit sticky, but that's okay because we're gonna work in some flour, like so. And you wanna need, now this was in the food processor, so it's not gonna need as much, it's not gonna need as much kneading. <laughs> sounds a little redundant, doesn't it? It's not going to need as much kneading because it was worked in the food processor. So we're just going to put this together like this. Now this texture is a little softer than the other dough, which is great. Okay, so now we're just going to roll this around, put it into a ball. This is going to be delicious. Sprinkle it like that. And we're going to pull our little white dough over here, too. Okay. There we go. Now I'm going to let these doughs rest, and I'm going to clean up a little bit, set up so we can roll out the pasta. Okay, these are the types of pasta rollers you can use. I have a stand mixer, okay? So I bought attachments. This is the roller, which is going to give you flat sheets, like when we did the raviolis. This is a what they consider a wide cut. This is a thin cut. I like the wide and the thin. Um, um, I like both of them. I like pasta. <laughs> I'm going to set in the roller first because what we're going to do is we're going to take our doughs, slide those up there, and we're going to see how nice and soft they are now. That's great. You need plenty of flour because they will stick. Okay, I got my cutter. I'm making a lot of noise. We'll start out with the spinach. Oh, that looks good. All right. And then what I do is I take them and I make them a little elongated like this so that they're gonna go into the roller. You can use a rolling pin if you want. I have one out there because sometimes it makes it a little flatter, a little easier to, to work. A little bit that way, not too much. We're gonna have it long. Now, I roll them out a little bit 
kind of like to help the machine out because it's a thick, it's thick to start out like that. So that's what we're gonna do. I'll roll them out a little bit. sprinkle these with flour a little bit because like I said they will stick when they go through the roller so the roller will actually incorporate a little more flour into them okay now we're gonna start out at one we did this in the ravioli show so we're gonna flip through this I'm coming down one setting. So I started out at one, two, three, and I'll go down to four. Because I, I don't like my homemade wide, wide, like thick. Because what happens is when you cook them, they're gonna swell. So they're gonna double in size. So you want them a little thinner. So I usually bring them down to number four, which is my next setting. Okay, let me see. Get your eyeballs, I should be wearing my glasses. And then that's going to roll them out as thin as I want them to be, okay? You can smell, you can, you can actually smell the, the spinach, the aloe and the oil. You can actually smell it in the pasta, which means this is going to be fabulous. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to flour these again because I want them to go through the cutter. I don't want them to stick when they go through. So I'm going to flour both sides. Okay. Like so. <laughs> I missed. <laughs> okay. All right. Flip them over a little bit. A little more flour. Look at how beautiful green that is. Jeez. That, that came out so good. <laughs> All right. Now, we're going to go with the thick cut on these. Okay? So what I have to do is I've got to take off my roller because I am going to do one pasta at a time. I like to concentrate on one thing and do it very good. All right. Now, you're going to cut these to the length you want your homemades. So if you like little short homemades, do little short homemades. I like them a medium length. I don't want anybody choking on them. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna cut all these pieces. Okay. Now, there we go. I'm gonna start rolling these through the cutter. Now, drying pasta, freezing pasta. I'm not really a pasta dryer. I would rather freeze my pasta. Only because today, the eggs and everything else, I get nervous about leaving things out too long. You want to dry them a couple days and use them, that's great. Go ahead and do that. My nana used to dry them. She'd take a big sheet and throw it out over her bed, and she'd put all her homemades all over the bed, let them dry. But by the end of the week, there was never any homemades left. So we ate them, and, and they're so easy to make fresh. But I'm going to show you how we're going to do this now. I'm going to put these in here. You're going to catch them out like this, okay? And you can see that it, it cuts them all, nice. And you're just going to drape them over your dryer. You get a little pole, a little um, mop handle or something, cover it with a sheet. They even have pasta dryers now that you can buy. They're like little clothes, wooden clothes dryers, only they're for pasta. They go right on your counter. They don't have one of those yet, but I don't really dry pasta. Oh, huh. lost one to the floor, but that's all right. Floor gets hungry too. Here we go, ready? I'm gonna kick this up with some tish towel so we can get through these today. All right. <laughs> all right, so now what I'm gonna do is, this is how I like to do my pasta when I'm gonna freeze it. I'm gonna shut this off a minute. cookie sheet here. I'm gonna, believe it or not, I got a five-foot breakfast bar and I'm running out of room. 
All right, so now I'm gonna cut these, okay? Oops, that's a little crooked, but that's okay. And then I usually take them and just lay, lay them down just like this. And then basically what I do is I grab when however many people are coming, whatever I think their section should be. If you get a big eater, you might want to give them three little little curls. You don't know. <laughs> All right. This is probably how I like to do my pasta best because I think when pasta is frozen, it just I don't I don't dry, so I'm partial to freezing. So it's up to you. You could dry or you could freeze. I'm gonna roll this up and then we're gonna start with our white pasta. over here. I don't really need to freeze those yet. I don't know how many we're going to fuck. All right, now I'm just going to scrape down my board or my counter. This is a bench scraper. I love them. Can't live without them. All right. Now, sometimes I like a tagatelli. All right, I'm just going to take a piece of dough like this, and I'm going to set this aside right there because we're going to roll those out. What I like to do is my daughter loves this with a meat sauce. Okay, I'm gonna just roll this out real quick by hand. All right, now, when you hand cut or hand roll a pasta, you wanna make sure that it feels even all the way through. Now, when I hand cut, I sprinkle a little flour there, rub it in. You're gonna fold, fold, fold from this side, here. A little bit more flour, fold over, fold over. Okay, well actually we'll pull that a little tight. No, that's good enough. All right, then you're gonna get a knife. And you're gonna cut them. Now a tagatelli I make wide because I like them really wide okay now these are gonna swell almost twice their size these are great with a meat sauce you can also make them thin if you want I've also made um, homemade flakes the little thin flakes for soup oh those are excellent soup really good in soup Okay, now the reason why you roll them that way is because you're gonna take the little ends and you're just gonna open them up, just like that. And that's how you cut your homemades. You flour the inside so that they come apart nice and easy. Now if you look at this noodle, this is a wide noodle. I'm gonna show you this compared to the thick spaghetti on the, see this is two, two pieces. So that's a wide noodle. And I'll tell you, with meat sauce, they're incredible. Okay, we're just gonna finish doing these. Just flip them out. And those are the tagatelli. And you can't get much better than this, I'll tell you. Homemade pasta is the best. I'm gonna put these over here on my cookie sheet with those. And now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take the white pasta and I'm gonna roll out the dough and I'm gonna make the thin ones. So you can see how those come out. Okay, so we're gonna roll this out just a tish. I'm gonna do the same exact thing I did with the spinach pasta. I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna start at one and I'm gonna go all the way down to four. Gotta switch this out. How anybody can not have a stand mixer in their house is beyond my imagination. I couldn't live without it. Now I'm going to cut these into sheets so that we can feed them through the thin cutter. Okay. Feels very 
Prairie Doughboy. Here we go. Ready? I'm going to lightly flour these so that they don't get stuck. I don't want them to get stuck. That won't be good. All right, and here we go. Now, these are going to be the thin ones. See, they're like little spaghettis. And I do the same exact thing. I'm just going to lay those right on the counter. It's like a little bowl, a little half bowl. These freeze great. I love them just like that. You can do this. This pasta will double in size, so you have to keep that in mind when you're cooking it. A pound of homemade is almost like two pounds. I'm going to start out cooking the spinach pasta. I'm going to start out with a little bit of an aloya, which is oil and garlic. But I'm going to add some butter in here. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook some shrimp, okay, in this aloya, okay? Put in our shrimps, shrimpy guys, like so. Now, what I'm going to do is this shrimp cooks fairly quick. As you can see, our water is boiling, which is great, okay? Oops, I don't want to lose my cover. That would be disastrous. Now, I'm going to take some green spaghetti pasta and I'm going to throw it in here. Now this pasta does not take long to cook so you don't need to cook it long. I think that's plenty. I'm going to put a little bit of the seasoned oil because I want to have the shrimp oh, oh bummer drop that. I want to have the shrimp taste like the pasta just a little bit though not a lot. Okay. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna put this down just a tick. I need a wooden spoon. There's plenty of garlic in here. We're not gonna add any more garlic because I have garlic in the spinach that's in the pasta. I have garlic in the shrimp. I mean, if you're a garlic fanatic, knock yourself out. A little salt. A little parsley for color. Okay. It's looking nice. Let's see our spinach pasta is going pretty good. There we go. I'm going to cover this up so it comes back for boil. Now that shrimp, believe it or not, is just about there because... Where's my... Oh, here's my spoon. I lost my spoon. This one's a little gray, but that's okay. Just they don't take long. If you overcook them, they're gonna be rubbery. Alright, now what we're gonna do next, my pasta's up to a boil. I'm gonna take this out. You wanna drain it pretty good. Put it in with the shrimp. A little bit of Romano cheese. <laughs> I like them how cheese. <laughs> then we're going to get my spaghetti grabbers here. I'm going to toss this around. Let the pasta pick up that butter and oil and garlic and shrimp flavor. Oh, it's going to be delicious. Just like this. Okay. Now you can do this with crab or lobster or um, scallops. You can do it with chicken, you can do it with, oh, there's all kinds of things you can do this with. All right, now this is one dish. We're gonna plate this on this dish. Slide it off. Make sure you put some little shrimps on top so we know what kind of dish it is. And this is shrimp with spinach pasta aloya. Okay, now while the water is boiling, I'm gonna drop in some tagatelli. I'm going to drop in a few little thin ones. Ordinarily, you don't drop regular, the same sizes, but this is all fresh, and it's going to cook in no time flat. We're going to stir that around. The heck, I might as well throw that other one in, too. OK. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bowl, because I don't want the meatballs mixed in with the marinara sauce. Okay. 
put those on the side for now. Whoops. That burner is still on, believe it or not. We'll take our marinara sauce, put it in here. On a nice low heat. Now marinara is just the canned plum tomatoes. You squish them up. You put them in oil, garlic, sometimes I put a touch of onions, but I didn't use onions in this sauce. Fresh basil and you simmer it for about 20 minutes. Great marinara sauce. These are boiling and they're ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take them up, drain them off. Put them in our marinara sauce. Gets the same drill as the other some Romano cheese in there. Okay. Our spaghetti fork. Mix it around in the marinara, just like this. Ooh, this is gonna be good too. Okay. Make sure you mix in your marinara good. It's good for the homemade pasta to cook in whatever sauce you're making because then the, the uh, sauce goes into your pasta, which I got sauce on my face, excuse me. Makes everything taste good. All right, now we have our bowl here. I'm gonna drop this right in here. All right, I'm make sure we get our pasta and our garlic and everything out of here because this is gonna be great. Okay, fix it naturally before the camera. We're gonna put our meatballs right on top. Oh my God, doesn't get much better than that. Okay, let's come over here and we'll finish up the show. All right, here is the homemade marinara, and here is the homemade with spinach and shrimp. Let's give them a shot. I'm gonna try these first because they look so good. Mmm. They are real good. <laughs> Dennis, I hope you have fun making homemade. Thank you for watching Tina Cooks. Have a good night. Oh no. I'm gonna start with the shrimp and the spaghetti and the stuff over again. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> mm. That is really good. <laughs>